guy. <laughs> this is a song about a man going back to somewhere he used to be, talking to somebody he used to be. Hey, Charlie, this used to be a garden, used to be a place we could go to and talk and tell each other lies. Hell no. Not like we were liars It's only that things never turn out like we planned I doubt they ever can When you're playing it by heart I can recall most of what we said, girls we hardly knew, but hope to bet and bullshit them boys use to have their heads. I wonder why we do that. We talk about the things we plan to see and do, dreams that somehow fade and disappear from blue. Looking back at me, I'm looking back at you, still playing it by heart. Hey, Charlie, did you ever get to China? Did you ever have your foreign affair? With a girl from Shangri-La As for me, well I'm still working on my millions And I still know how to laugh and how to cry And I still know how to dream Still playing it by heart. <clears throat> My name is John Hanlon and I am a songwriter. Some of you know me as a pop songwriter, some of you know me as a protest singer, some of you know me as didn't you used to be John Hanlon? But I never stop writing songs, and I've been writing them for over 50 years and recording them. And I've come out to play because uh, a couple of years ago I died, and somebody saved my life by giving me an organ. And I thought, you know what, I'd go out and I'd honour their memory by doing a few concerts, so here I am. I'm going to go right back to the beginning, because <clears throat> my entire career as a songwriter was accidental. <laughs> I began as a teenager in a place called Howick, wandering around the cliffs, uh, getting lost on the rocks, and coming up with great ditties like... Strings, 
Gott wie Marionettes. Pretend that they have wings. <coughs> It went on. <coughs> It went on, whatever there, um, and um, not all of them were bright. That's quite a melancholy soul. And um, my life is a dream. Floating on a sea All I ever ask is to be free My song is the wind So you get the picture, so I'm a, basically I'm a folk song writer, and I'm writing songs, and all I, I'm just doing it for fun. I'm not, it's, it's not, um, I don't have any um, ambitions. I was too shy to even, you know, sing in front of my parents, which caused my mother once in an interview, when, when I did get success and my, my mother was interviewed, and they said, did you realize that your son was a songwriter? And they said, no, she said, no, but... We, he did, when he was a teenager, he did stay in his bedroom and jinga jang a lot. <laughs> and the interviewer didn't know where, where to look. <laughs> um. Sitting in the sun, driving in the rain, listening to that tune. Quite funny to some of you.
having no money can be good for you. Just passing time in a simple way. Just because there seemed no other way. When So there you are, teenage angst, circa 1965, 66, something like that. And then I, uh, you know, fell into the real world, went and became an art student, still wanted to write songs, but had no great aspirations. It's not much use being a songwriter, to be too shy to get up in front of people and sing in a band, so that was my career. And then I accidentally got discovered. That, that's a story for another time, because it sounds like a B-movie plot. But it's a true story. And I began to think when I got a, a recording contract, maybe, just maybe, this could happen. Um, but, I, you know, it was a real world. I had to have a real job. And I used to walk down Grafton Road to my job, which was up in Parnell. So you get to the bottom of Grafton Road in Auckland, and you turn right up into Parnell to the advertising agency where I worked. I was having fun. My job was fun. But a huge part of me thought, I wonder if I could make a living writing songs. And I had a pair of, you're going to laugh, but they were blue suede boots. And they were just they were more like workman's boots, actually. And I was walking down the road looking at my boots one day, <laughs> and I'd get to the bottom of the hill, and the boots would want to go to town and play. And my brain would say, no, nah, you've got to go to, go to, go to, go to work. Change direction, I won't mind. Let's go walk and see what we can find. We've been together for a while. There was a time when you were all of the style. But as you know, fashion's just a game. In being different, everyone's the same. So if you should change your mind out, we could take another line out. Do we really have to go this way? Man, I'd really like change lose yours no. money now that's the root of all I've often wondered what we use it for and again I need another car Oh, I wonder if I'll ever be a star. Hey, 
blue shoes Imagine how that would be All the people Come to look at me And I'd be sitting Singing out the words I feel With all the papers Writing about my sex appeal So if you should change your mind I'll we could take another line oh. Do we really have to go this way? Man, I'd really like a change So now, life is full of irony. And here's the irony for me. The irony is that while I was trying desperately to become a successful songwriter, my break came through my day job. And to join me on my next song, I'd like to introduce my life accompanist, Jana Zugiba. I'll uh, tell a bit of a story and then we'll leap into this. So I, I was, um, you gotta imagine, you know, this, this, was this, this was the early 70s. There I was with my stripy pants and my big hair, my beard. And I was in a, a very environmentally conscious and one of my, uh, my, my boss came to me, a gruff man, he said, hey, you're a bit of a, a, a conservation environment, you care about the environment, stuff like that. We, we did, clients got a job. They want to put insulation into all new homes and they want to convince you to do something for them. I, I was an advertising writer. And so they came along and they had a talk to me and they said, did you know that the, most of the heat that we waste and electricity that is wasted is because we don't insulate houses and all the, the heat goes through the walls. So it was given to me as a job and I, I thought about this and I came back to them and said, okay, I've got an idea. It's a two minute long radio commercial and we never actually mentioned the name of your product. I did things like this. And so I sat down and I played them a two minute jingle. And they loved it. And there was a 10 second set that just said, this, this message was brought to you by New Zealand Fiberglass. I said, you, there was something in the middle. They liked it so much they decided that it would be a record. And I said, no, 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 hey, actually I'm, a, I'm the one who picks the records. You know, they said, no, no, this could be a record. My record company heard it and they thought this could be a record. So the only guy in the room who thought it couldn't be a record was the genius sitting before you. Uh, so they went to the NZBC, which was basically, NZBC was, uh, it meant God in New Zealand. And uh, you had to get their permission to go on the, um, the radio. And they said, look, if you release this as a single, uh, you can get, you, then we will let it be an ad. But if you do it as an ad, it can't be a, it can't be a, um, uh, anyway, it was released as a single, so it could be a single first. And blow me down. I was going to say something else then, but I saw your flight there. It, it became a success. This song became Damn the Damn and it was picked up by everybody. And um, so, well, Yana and I'll try and do it for you. You can sing along, by the way. Okay, I won't mind at all. The foster kiss, the image of a mountain, the early morning mist has ceased to play. Birds dancing lightly on the branches by a fountain of a waterfall which dazzles with its spray. Tall and strong and aged, contented and serene, a cowry tree surveys this grand domain. 
And for miles and miles around him A sea of rolling green Tomorrow all this beauty won't remain Damn the damn cried the fantail As he flew into, as he flew into the sky Part to the people, all this beauty has to die. Rainfall from above splashes on the ground, goes running down a mountain to the sea. Leaping over pebbles makes such a joyful such is Mother Nature's gift to me. I have great reflection, reflection of a gray. Trees that once lived green now dead and brown. The homes of tiny animals and little birds as well. For the sake of man's progression have been drowned Down the dam cried the fantail As he flew into, as he flew into the sky To give power to the people All this beauty has to die Fantail as he flew into, as he flew into the sky. Oh, get down the dam, cried the fantail as he flew into, as he flew into the sky to give power to the people. All this beauty has to die. thing about all that of course is here we are 50 years later and the world's in the worst bloody shape in New Zealand in particular you know so yelling into the abyss all my life and you'll hear me do a bit of that tonight okay what you don't know is NZBC tried to ban that song why I hear you ask because it had the word damn in it and they wanted me to change it to ban the damn which ironically a lot of people come to me and say didn't you do that song ban the damn However, they did manage to ban this next song I'm going to do for you. And I'm going to sing it because the irony of that is Dan the Dan won me an award for something or other. I don't remember the recording awards. I think it was single of the year or something. But the next year, the composition of the year was this song. Best recorded composition. An award I was to win three years in a row. Not that you know now because I'm not on any list of New Zealand songwriters, incredibly. And this song I'm going to do for you was banned by the NZBC because of its lyrics. And frankly, to hear a 73-year-old man singing these lyrics is kind of dodgy, I have to admit. <laughs> but nevertheless, we're going to do it. Here's a song called Is It Natural?
right in on a bus reading all about your neighbors wondering who you can trust In a smile, did you, child? Did you? Did you in summer vacation lie naked neath the stars? Or did you feel they all tried to abuse you? And all they ever told you of lies in order to gain a satisfaction which you deny Short eyes, the beeping Tom is leering. Says he'd like to try. My oh my, lie la lie, lie 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 la lie la. He can all do this. Everybody would sing la 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 la. <laughs> By the way, my reason my reason for doing the la la la's is quite simple. Do you if you ever go to um, New Year's Eve, right? You get a New Year's Eve party. Should all the angels be forgot for the sake of all they la 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 la. So I figured that everybody could do la la la. So there I was, we had the band song, and um, uh, it, it, so that was, while well, it won me an award and, and a radio station I'm eternally grateful for, to Radio Hauraki, um, and I believe, 
uh, they they were they were out at sea and they played it, you know, because they because they weren't listening to the NZBC in those days. And I remember there's a he of the golden balls is in the room here, Bob Gentle from Magic now, and he uh, he used to be the motorbike boy <laughs> when I was working at an advertising agency. Both of us dreaming about things, and who knew what was going to happen? Hi, Bob. Um, cheers, mate. So I was having I was trying to write. Um, uh, the next song, right? The next song. Well, how am I going to get some airplay? And this is one I, I, I was going to release. And uh, it never quite happened. Um, I'm going to try an effect here. Let's have a look. Um, it was, I really wanted to, we, this is a nice song, we released it on an album, it was never released as a single for a reason I'll tell you in a minute. This song was called Why Wasn't Me. Walks down, down that lonely avenue With a look in her eyes That tells you she's a child She talks down She talks down to the people who Do not realize what it is that she's been through should have known why tell me why wasn't it why tell me why wasn't why tell me why wasn't it me if you ask her what it is that makes her blue she'll smile a gentle smile Tells you she's a child But if you knew her You would know this is not so Cause she looked that way before I went and let her go mm -hmm. Oh woman, don't you weep, don't you moan I should have known that you say where have you been I've been to dreamland to visit the queen wasn't she good wasn't she nice didn't her crown sparkle like I So that was a harmless bit of nonsense, wasn't it? <laughs> and um, it never, we, we never released it. And why didn't we release it? And here's why we didn't release it. My, uh, after my uh, getting a song banned, despite winning an, uh, uh, an award, uh, my record company got very nervous. It was taken over by a different person who didn't sign me. This is what happens in the world. The next thing you know, you're working for somebody you never, who never really signed you in the first place. And they said, you have to get on TV. There's a guy you will notice will we'll be filming tonight uh, because here's the thing that's going to blow you away. There is less than 15 seconds of video footage of me that exists, despite my um, uh, 
uh, I think, arguably very successful recording career. And uh, just 15 seconds. Why? Because the aforementioned NZBC and I did not get on at all. They kept wanting me to come out and sing Neil Diamond songs and dance in front of dancing girls on the, you know, the shows that were on TV. You, you all remember them. You know, I can't even remember the names. And myself, Hullabaloo or whatever the hell it was called. Happening, things like that. And I had a bit of a blue with the guy around them. So I wasn't on TV, which is kind of interesting because I did have four or five top ten hits. So you'd think they would be, they exist, but no, they don't exist. So um, my record company was very desperate about this, understandably so. And it was in the days when there was only one, you know, the, a lot of people in this room go, are you kidding me? There was one TV show, black and white actually it happens, one TV station, uh, TV One, and they had a show called Studio One, and on the section of Studio One there was a, um, I think it was a New Faces section, and there was a songwriting section. And I had been in the songwriting section by writing a song for the late Steve Gilpin, where Mike Harvard and I wrote a song called Knowing, which he did. And I actually entered a song and I didn't get in. So I, that was that. My record company says, you gotta enter a song, enter that song contest. And I said, but I already did. And they said, well, enter another one. Well, I'm a contrary bastard, so I entered the same song. <laughs> but this time, the song got through, you know? And the next thing you know, one Sunday night, this hairy guy wearing spectacles appears on TV singing a song Actually, it was the second night of the competition. I think it ran for 13 weeks. So for 12 weeks... I warbled away a song that went to the top of the hit parade simply because I was on TV. Sitting in the sun Contemplating, celebrating All your day's work done And all that you're concerned about Is how to get some fun And to get you one It's an evil man I've often wondered if he does it All run to a plan Anyway, girl, could I say I'll do the best I can If you make me your man Nothing you can do. 
I'm very disappointed I can play that better than that. I'm so sorry. Okay, now I bring back the real musician. And we're going to do a song that... Um, this, uh, this song became kind of famous because it appeared in a movie called Off the Edge. And uh, a lot of people thought it was written for the movie, but the reality is it wasn't. Um, although I did know the guy who was making the movie, and it was just a sheer coincidence. I was uh, on my first ever tour. Um, in, in fact, it was a tour just after Lovely Lady had gone to number one. And I was an opening act for, a, for a, um, a diva, let's just say that, okay? And by the time I got to Christchurch, I'd had it with her. She was uh, um, too much of a diva. And I... Um, I, I went out on the, 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 I was the support act and I went out in the concert theater and the concert chamber in the Christchurch, now defunct Christchurch town, uh, theater and um, showed off a bit. And um, the next day the reviews were all about um, me, not her. And she spat the dummy, gone. And we were mid-tour. And um, so, uh, I, I was very friendly with her guitarist, uh, Peter Berryman, at, by this stage, because we were being, I was an opening act, so I was, <laughs> I, Pete and I had to share, which was just bloody terrible, because this guy was a chicken magnet, so I spent half the night walking the streets. Um, I won't go into that in any depth. But we, when we got to, uh, when she quit, we, there were still a couple of uh, bookings left, so we took over the, um, I remember Lincoln College, because I thought, oh, well, we could do the university. So I went to the tour people and said, Pete and I, we'll do Lincoln College for 300 bucks and a bag of dope. So we did. And um, we did Lincoln College. And then we went to Methven, and we went up to, because neither of us had ever been to the snow. He came from England, but he'd never been to a mountain. So, so we went up there and we were doing that. Meantime, back in my other life in Auckland, one of my ex-advertising clients had begun making hang gliders, real old clunky things called the seagull hang gliders. And um, uh, they introduced me to a guy who was using their hang gliders in his movie called Off the Edge. And, oh, by the way, they'd blown me off the back of some hills in Whitford and I'd screamed like a girl. And um, the, um, sorry girls, but I did. <laughs> and, um, and sort of that thing happened. And when I saw the movie, I said to Mike, hey, I've got a song that I think would work in this, and, and this is that song. control the way I go 
What's more, I take time to kiss the snow. Higher trails through the sky. Watch me sail. Watch me fly. And I sing. As I run and fly, little bird fly, watch a little bird fly. Hey, see my old friend over there. Watch as the wind goes rushing through his hair Watch as the light shines in his eyes I find I'm laughing It sure feels nice He see my Upon the natural high you get from sailing through the sky, higher trails through the sky. Watch me sail, watch me fly, and I sing. As I run and fly, watch a little bird fly, watch a little bird fly. La da 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 la da da. Thank you very much. Um, so that was on an album, and I believe Phil Yule, who was the engineer on that album, and Vic Williams, who played drums, they're here tonight, and they're in there. And that album won us the Album of the Year and all kinds of awards. It's since been, uh, somebody said it was overproduced, but hey, what can you say about that? Okay, this next song, I'm gonna play for you because I'm particularly proud of it. I, I liked it at the time, and unbeknownst to me, because uh, the, the, uh, the album that came up called you Use Your Eyes was not a massive success, but there was a lot of reasons for that, and I won't bore you with them. But this song won me my third uh, recorded composition of the year award. Uh, it's a song called Nightlife. And I've got a fascination. This, this, this kind of guy keeps coming up in my songs, and I could probably do an entire concert on songs I wrote about old guys I saw drunk on the side of the road. Um, and what were they me? Uh, but I don't drink, but you know what I mean? I drink very little. So this song was written while I was visiting Sydney for some reason, and I don't remember. And um, I saw a guy staggering across the road, and not for the first time in my life when I saw this person uh, with his, with his um, paper bag, you know, the brown paper bag with the drink in it. You, you think to yourself, well, they, they had a life. One day, they were, you know, at, at some time they were kids. Sometimes they had hopes and aspirations. And, and so, <clears throat> this is what this song's about. Uh 
a thin disguise For all the sadness in the old man's eyes If it helps him through his day checking my phone because I'm checking for messages. I'm trying to run this like a military operation. I have so much time in this venue. We're going to finish now with a song. Uh, sorry, we're going to finish. We're going to finish this half of the song to a, a, a dear friend of mine at, at the time. She's no longer with us. Um, her, her name, and I, I don't know, some of you may have known her and some of you would have heard her sing. Her name was Josie Eureka and she was mostly a, a backing singer, but Josie was a, a, a beautiful lady. 
and a dear friend of mine. And sadly, when she got married, um, I couldn't go to the wedding. I was on tour. So I ran into uh, a brand. That's a slight exaggeration. I never run anywhere. I, I wrote this four chord song. <laughs> <laughs> and I went into a studio and we recorded it. Mike Harvey played piano. Um, and um, we put it, as I recall, we put it straight down and it, would, it was cut straight onto an acetate. And, and that was taken to her uh, for her wedding uh, while I was on tour. And she had a daughter, had, has a daughter, whose name is Sandy. And I spelled her name wrong apparently. But um, uh, I wrote a song called Sandy your mother's in love. An interesting thing is for you, if you listen to the song, Sandy, your mother's in love, and then listen to once, twice, three times the lady, you're going to say, Hanlon, you stole that. But the fact of the matter is, I entered that song into a song contest in America, which Lionel Richie was a judge of. <laughs> and I entered that song, I, I recorded that song in 1976, and Phil Yule, because he was there, he recorded it. And in 1978, I, uh, and, uh, and the, um, the uh, bit that's really copied, actually, is not mine, because I just wrote four chords, folks, you know, and you've heard me play guitar, so I'm not, I'm not a genius. Um, uh, Mike Harvey did the piano part based on these chords, and I'm telling you, once, twice, three times a lady is note a bloody note, right? If you don't believe me, go and listen to yourself. Okay, this is for my dear late friend, Jesse Rigger. Sandy, your mother's in love. to notice some changes she's taken a man into her life may I say that I wish them well I bet you do too Thank you.